So this cannon was given to Idi Amin by Gaddafi. Whoa. So we are going to the Idi Amin's torture chambers. In a period of eight years, he was in power. Yeah. Uh, this country lost over 300,000 people. In this place, Idi killed over 19,000 people. Remember, I got a visitor from Israel. Yeah. He was a structure engineer. Yeah. And after taking him round, he turned to me and said, we are very sorry we constructed this, but not knowing that Idi Amin was going to turn this into a torture chamber. He never had a permanent friend. He was a kind that would be a friend in the morning and an enemy in the afternoon. He then turned against his cabinet ministers. Wow. He killed his own wife, K. Amin. So we are going to St. Lawrence in uh, Mango. So we took a bike because uh, taking, you know, matatus or maybe public means of transport, the buses, is going to take a long of t uh, a longer time. So we had to take, you know, uh, the motorbikes. So let's go. I'm fine, man. <laughs> Very rowdy. So, man, I like this, man. I like this, man. I like this. Is it a roundabout or a flyover? It's a flyover. So beautiful. It's called how? Queensway. Queensway. Yeah, Queen. Oh, it's called Kingsway, not King. So Queen is Queens. Oh, wow! Queen's Look at way. that, man! In Kampala, Uganda, man, so beautiful. <laughs> My name is Mtaa the Voice. For those watching for the first time, man, let's go. Lawrence and uh, JB are right there. Can you see them? They're just there. This is Kabaka's Lake. It was named after the king. Wow. That's amazing. Oh, this is the University of St. Lawrence. Yeah. Oh. So, so this lake was named after the king of Uganda. I know Uganda Kingdom is quite familiar with Ugandans or maybe history classes. So that is the lake named after the Kabaka. So yeah, we have arrived. So we are trying to trace that place. So let me pay first uh, for for the border border. Then we proceed on. So many people don't know this place actually. The idea means you know uh, torture chambers. So still searching for it. We, we went to cross. We are on the wrong way. We want to go. A little bit of confusion here. I'm told it is inside this perimeter wall that we are seeing here right now. So let's go to the main gate and see if we are going to be allowed to get inside because it's kind of like it has got uh, you know some restrictions and political things are so political. So let's go try. All right, we got lost again. We We had to inquire, man. There is kind of like some fear about it so you get just to understand so you enter the gate right now there's some cattle these are called nyankole cows right with these big horns <laughs> wow so still going still going still going the environment is quite spooky though the environment has got some beauty on it itself it's a tourist site they know it but you know i just know scared of it i don't know why is it so they're like when they hear the name they start freezing that's the thing on the road again i never knew it's gonna be this tough or spooky or you know you can feel the tense you see this this land belongs to kabaka the king of baganda right yeah. all of this even that's oh, oh that is Kampala city when you're here man it looks so beautiful looks so beautiful wow so let's continue moving all this land belongs to the king of Baganda people man, in Uganda we in Kampala this is amazing Kampala that's a rare thing to see in cities man people still planting this corn and this cassava here Bananas on the other side. Let me zoom. Can you see bananas? Bananas are a staple food. It's a staple food in Uganda. 
all this land belonging to the king of Uganda. There is focus, man. You know, I don't know why or why it was so tense like this, but uh, let's go. How do you, we, we don't understand Luganda. What do you mean? Like, wait, first of all. What? Oh, there, right there. Okay, thank you, bro. We are almost there, we are almost there. Wow. That was a hassle to be at this place, so you're going to ask for permission first. My name is Otala Voice. Uh, for those watching for the first time, I do travel videos. So I'm going to show you something that is history here. There is history here, and I'm going to explain to you right now. So what is this? Uh, I told them it's uh, Idi Amin's canon. Oh, it's Idi Amin's canon. It was given to him by Gaddafi. G given to him by Gaddafi. Yes. Oh, man. Keeping it here because in 1997, uh -huh. uh, the president gave back the palace compound to the kingdom. Okay. And this time, the kingdom begged at least to keep this one behind. Wow, wow. So this is a canon given to to Idi Amin by Gaddafi. Man. So it looks like this, man. Wow, wow, wow. Now let's go, let me follow them, let me follow them. Wow, there's so much about this place, man. So this cannon was given to Idi Amin by Gaddafi. Whoa. So we are going to the Idi Amin's torture chambers. Wow, it's just 200 meters from where we are right now. So there are a lot of things there, you know, even reaching here. Many people, many Ugandans, I don't know. Why is it like you don't know this place? But we headed there to the Idi Amin's torture chambers. So, let's go. So, we are moving right there. So, going slowly by slowly. You can give Uganda every type of food, minus yeah. we're talking. Wow. At the end of the day, you ask him whether he has had food and the reply is no. <laughs> it's no. Because this banana is missing. So, wow. the green bananas with yeah. peel, steam, and mash like potatoes. Yeah. Usually, we take it with the ground nut paste. Wow, 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 wow. 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 My grandmother's favorite. <laughs> our grandmother's favorite. Yeah. So, the kingdom is blessed with the 27 banana species. Oh. And these are grouped in four. Okay. We have a group known as desserts. Desserts? The sweet yellow bananas. Okay. Mm. Uh, we also have the plantains. Plantain. Mm. These are taken roasted. Okay. We can take them actually uh, fried. Mm. We can mm. even make crisps, the banana crisps out of them. Wow. Then we have the beer bananas. Okay. And it all starts with the banana juice. Ah. This juice we use roasted sorghum flour as yeast, as mouth. Okay. It ferments. The one they sell by the roadside in yes. bottles. Uh, I don't take that one. Call it a tonto. Man called Chinene. He likes it very yeah, much. Tonto. And then we can even distillate it and get a gin. Wow. Yeah. The gin we call it warrej. Wow. That oh, I've, a, I've heard of warrej. Actually, uh, the gin. Okay. It's like a, mm, it's like vodka. Yeah. Um, well, uh, if you go in the stores, you will find the UG. And the warage those mm. bottles, but yeah. these are basically it's a pineapple brand. I know and pineapple coconut. so much, coconut. but the best like one coconut. is the one from Batoke. Oh, but is, the, that warage you sold in the corridor, yeah. but you take the one from the bananas. Wow, mm. then uh, I think the last one is the green bananas, the one okay. I told you, the Batoke. Batoke. I think that's the common one. Mm. Oh. Wow, that Did is the a... Amin Dada. Yes. He was the third president of Uganda. Okay. And this was a president from 1971 to 1979. Yeah. In a period of eight years, he was in power. Yeah. Uh, this country lost over 300,000 people. 300,000. And the population was 12 million. Wow. So four percent died. That is according to the book, The Last King of Scotland. Wow. And in 1970, yeah, some people have seen the film. The letters have read the book. Yeah. And uh, in 1970, immediately Idi Amin came to power. Yeah. He hired Israelis yeah. to build a store for his weapons. Wow. Mm -hmm. This armory, Idi used it for only eight months. Wow. And after he was told that Obote, his former boss, was in Tanzania. Yeah. You know, uh, planning, mobilizing, yeah. you know, to come back. Yeah. Idi Amin, he immediately turned to this armory. So this Idi Amin's well, armory, torture chambers, man. 
and other political threats in the country. He killed them for a period of seven years, wow. 1972 to 1979, and in this place he killed over 19,000 people. 19,000 people yes. killed here? In 1980, wow. Obote came back for the second time. He was told about Idi's behaviors. Yeah. Obote also revenged yeah. and killed 6,000 Idi supporters in the same place. Wow. Altogether, the two killed over 25,000 people. At in this here. place? The place, it had water and the yeah. water was electrified. Wow. There was a gate to make sure no one escapes. Hey. And people killed in this place were got within Kampala city. Now the business center and the suburbs, yeah. they would blindfold them, tied their hands behind, threw them into the car boots, then they circled them Kampala. Wow. Then after driving them for six to seven hours, yeah. people reaching here, they thought they were miles and miles away from the city center. Wow. And then they would use the electrified water yeah. in order to extract information out of them. So we are entering Idi Amin's torture chambers, man. So these are Idi Amin's torture chambers, man. So we are going inside. People were packed, starved, and suffocated to death. Wow. And each morning, these top officers would come. This time, switch off the electricity, uh, walked through this water into the rooms, uh, picking out bodies. Wow. And for those who seemed very weak inside the rooms, were again pushed in the same water. Uh, this time, to make sure they breathe their last. Mm. And bodies from here, are the bodies that came out of here, we are dumped into the Nile River. You know, in River Nile, we have so many crocodiles. Mm. Yeah. Others in Lake Victoria, they are bigger fish like Nile Patch, we have tilapia. Mm. We even have the wetlands, especially mm. the Namave, mm. in and around Kampala. Mm. Uh, many people were dumped in those areas. Mm. And some of these people were innocent. Mm. Only that the type of forces we had were not professional, they were not disciplined. Mm. and they would go on killing whoever they suspected that was not on their side. Women and children were not killed in this place. Mm. They never killed women and children. They were targeting men, doctors, mm. lawyers, mm. economists, engineers, uh, high priests. You know, these high priests, at times, they would preach against their practices. Okay. They also became targets, and they ended up dragging them in here wow. to be killed in the same way. Wow. People don't have fathers. They don't have grandfathers. They forget. And the cables from this point, the, key. the black line that was the water level, then the switch, electric switch was somewhere. Mm. And uh, I got, I remember I got a visitor from Israel. Yeah. He was a structure engineer. Yeah. And after taking him round, he turned to me and said, we are very sorry we constructed this, but not knowing that Idi Amin was going to turn this into torture chamber. He was explaining how armories are designed yeah. and showed me that when you look at the doors in here, yeah. they are high and that is the level of the trucks. Oh. That uh, armories are designed in such way, lorries or trucks reverse, then they offload on the sideways and this was like a loading dock. When you looked at the cables in the area it's where you see the cables and the switch, oh. the cement is different from other parts of the world, which means this was not part of the initial plan. These were put after somebody must have chiseled and placed in the cables. So this, this was the cables, man. Now you see uh, all the rooms there are of the same size, and these were poorly, poorly ventilated. Uh, you see the vents, and then after turning this in, in the cell, mm. they sealed the vents. Mm. Oh. Each room with a sliding door and a second door on the inside. So they would do that as many as possible. And all they want to see people compete for oxygen. Oh. Before the prisoners died, some would put their names on the wall. And one of the prisoners they wrote at the extreme end that the robot on this Naye Avan Avan. You can see it is fading out at the extreme end. Mm -hmm. And this means robot you have now killed me. Uh, then what about my children? Mm -hmm. He was a father. So Obote also brought them here. Idi Amin was the first one to bring them here. So Obote revenge now. Get to bring. Wow. Uh, there is this lady whose husband was killed in the same place. And when she came the this that we have to go, she got here. But I never. The problem is she went to try to never forget. My husband was killed before Obote. Wow. 
of what his men killed her husband. I mean, these are two governments, Idi Amin and the Bodhis government. Idi Amin, the name is here, and this name still spells destruction. Idi Amin. Mm -hmm. He never had a permanent friend. He was a kind that would be a friend in the morning and an enemy in the afternoon. He then turned against his cabinet ministers. Wow. He killed his own wife, K. Amin. So no one was safe. Idi Amin was like, yeah, yeah I saw that. I saw yeah. that. No one was safe. Wow. And they, in this last room, there are handprints left behind by the prisoners. Wow. It's not blood. Yeah. If it was blood over the years, it would have turned black. So this was dirty water. The mm. earth, oh. as people jumped and they ended up touching and leaving all the markings behind. Now the samples were tested and the years really much with the days when it was in power. Mm -hmm. They stand to be authentic. Mm -hmm. And could be one of the other reasons as to why the Kabaka doesn't stay on the same hill. I mean, this is the dark side of the palace. Yes, yes. Wow. wow. What? Idia means torture chambers. Man, so... What are you seeing there? I mean, India means torture chambers right there. And also, Obote also used them as his torture chambers after India mean. Man, it is so spooky inside here. I wish you could be able, you can feel like the horrors, like, you know, the spirits of those people are still here, man. India means torture chambers right here. Here they are in Uganda, Kampala. Wow, that's crazy. Man, look at this. Wow. Man. There's a big bunker actually. Man, you know, I've been hearing them in history books or in, document, in documentary and so on, man. But it's so spooky and the cells are very big as compared to what you see in the documentaries, man. That was crazy, man. So the moment, this is like the point of no return. Like when you enter here, going this side to the uh, torture chambers, that's crazy. And you know those torture chambers, like they could stack as many people as possible so that they could lose the oxygen and therefore die. So they used to write on the walls and so on and so on. So it's crazy, man. So this bank was built by the Israelis actually. So that's why you can see the, you know, the guide there was explaining there was one Israeli who came here and actually apologized to him and say we never knew that Idi Amin could do this you know uh, for what you built him the bank here you know for the armory this was the armory sorry for that armory man wow this is what is written here uh, you know the Idi Amin's chamber you know the torture chambers man so here it is so one last time let me show you this how it looks man just imagine you're entering like this. This is a point of no return and it has been written here. Can you see Idi Amin's armory that was constructed by the Israelites in 1970s but turned into a torture chamber where thousands of Ugandans lost their lives. Imagine. Man, let me go. Let me go, man. I don't want to. But uh, you guys, have you realized uh, there's still a lot of questions to be asked about this place? Like, the story doesn't add up. That's just my, my thinking. I feel there is a part of it that doesn't add up. What do you think? Tell me in the comment section. Okay, maybe Idi Amin was brutal, but some stories still don't add up. Maybe it's just me who has realized it. Uh, or maybe you can give me uh, your contribution from here. So let's keep moving. Just imagine you're being taken right there. Man, Idi Amin, Dada. Oh man, so he was overturned by Milton Obote later on again and he had to run to Saudi Arabia, you know, he, you know, he fled to Saudi Arabia, man, of which later on in the early 2000s, he died. Wow, but he still has got sons in Uganda here, still living here. Uh, I will research about, about them later on. Well, guys, we are coming from that other side, from the Idi Amin's torture chambers that were later on used by Milton Obote also as torture chambers man wow that's rich history now I understand why you know uh, 
most people our people who we were asking when we were coming here they're not ready to you know answer that question where is the torture chambers everybody was like freezing wow like even though someone who told who told us that when you go there you're not coming back just crazy 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 man that was it man that was it though i've got my own questions i've got my own doubts but that was the story Tell me, what do you think in the comment section? I need to know what you think about the Idi Amin's torture chamber and also the tour are used by the Milton Obote. So Idi Amin was a, was a, was a president of, uh, was the president of, uh, you know, um, Uganda who overthrew, uh, I mean, uh, Obote. There is a dog here looking lovely. Look at this dog looking so beautiful. But that was it. That was it, man. I appreciate, man, for your time. Thank you for watching, for supporting, liking, and subscribing. It has been a pleasure, man. I shall continue bringing you amazing, amazing content about this beautiful world. What else can I say? Please hit that subscribe button, that like button, comment, and also contribute on what we can improve on, man. My name is Untar The Voice. Have a good time.